Now you might say, this is a number theory problem. How can you draw a diagram? Mathematics is changing. Hello students. I hope you are doing beautiful mathematics. This is Ashwini Dashgupta from Chinda.com. In this video, we will do something fun. I will tell you how I think about a particular problem. And I think that this can be done by any intelligent student who is interested in mathematics. So, you can also follow this method with me. It's a very simple but beautiful method to solve Olympiad problems. So, this problem actually came up in USMO. USMO is the equivalent of Indian National Math Olympiad in the United States. It's a very beautiful problem, but I want you to follow along my chain of thought. Maybe, maybe you can use it in some other problem as well. So, let's talk about the problem first. We have n factorial. You know what n factorial is? It is simply 1 times 2 times 3 up to n. This is n factorial. The problem says, list out all the divisors of n factorial. So, d1, d2, d3, these are the divisors of n factorial, the divisors, such that d1 is 1, 1 is of course the first divisor, and dk is the last number, which is n factorial. Of course, n factorial divides n factorial, right? Okay, and we arrange it in the ascending order. Arrange it in the ascending order. Now, the question asks, what about the divisor differences? What is, what is the meaning of that? So, if I take the difference of D2, okay, let's use a different color. Let's say D2 minus D1, that is this difference. D3 minus D2, if I keep on taking the differences of the divisors, will it also be increasing less than or equal to D4 minus D3 and so on. If I keep on taking the divisor differences, will it also be increasing? Or is it true that there aren't many such numbers? for which the divisor differences will increase? That is the question. So, the first thing I thought when I looked at this problem, and this is something that I always, always do, is actually draw a diagram. Draw a diagram. Now, you might say, this is a number theory problem. How can you draw a diagram? Well, for number theory, combinatorics, algebra, this sort of stuff, the diagram is the example. For geometry, you can actually draw a diagram. But for these, you actually work your hands on with an example. So, for this, let's try n equals to uh, 4. Okay. By the way, they already say that n has to be greater than or equal to 3. So, don't worry about stuff below 3. So, let's try this entire statement of the problem with n equals to 4, okay? So, what do we do? Well, we first take 4 factorial, which is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, which is 24. Then we list out the divisors of 24. Well, 1 is a divisor, 2 is a divisor, 3 is a divisor, 4 is a divisor, uh, 5 is not a divisor, 6 is a divisor, 8 is a divisor, 12 is a divisor, and 24 is a divisor. So we have 8 divisors. Fantastic. Now we look at the difference of divisors. Difference of divisors. So let's try that. So the difference of the first two divisors is 2 minus 1, which is 1. Then we have 3 minus 2, which is also 1. Then we have 4 minus 3, which is also 1. 6 minus 4, which is 2, 8 minus 6, which is 2, 12 minus 8, which is 4, and 
24 minus 12, which is 12. Okay, so the device's differences, the divisor differences are also increasing, right? Now I understand the problem much better. Now that I have actually looked at an example, right? This is the first thing I do. So you should also try this, see how it works, okay? All right. Then what is the next thing I'm thinking? How do I start with this problem? How do I go about even thinking about this problem? Well, I try to find, here is, here is what I'm thinking. Try to find, find N, try to find N for which this does not work for which this fails. Now, I want to say something very interesting at this point. Mathematics is changing. I'll put a link in the description of a paper by Terence Tao, where he talks about how machine learning can help you to do mathematics faster, better. One of the things that I, when I look at this problem, we don't even have to go as far as machine learning. We can just use some simple Python code. This step, trying to find n for which this fails, this particular step, it's like the experimentation step. This can be easily done with a computer. Of course, I will not do it with a computer. I'll do it with a pen and paper, but I would strongly recommend you to look at the link in the description for the paper by Terence Tao has just come out in February and you will see how beautifully mathematics is transforming and some of the research students at Chiddar are actually participating in that sort of transformation in our own small way. Okay, so let's talk about this. We are trying to find an N for which this fails. What fails? That is the divisor differences do not increase. Divisor differences do not increase. Okay, so how can we go about that? Let's try with 5 factorial. Why? Because it's just the next one. It's easy to compute. 5 factorial is 120. 5 factorial is 120. And I can list out the divisors of 120 pretty quickly. So, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 doesn't work, 8, 8 works, I think, yes, yes, 8 works. And then, uh, I'm just doing it in the increasing order, yes. 10, 9 doesn't work, 10. And then we have 12. Then we have, uh, well, we have 20, I think. Yeah, 15 will work, yes, 15 will work. 15 will work, 20, 20 works. Then we have 24. And we can keep on doing this. We can keep on doing this. Uh, 24 also works because 24 times 5, 20 times 5 is 100, 4 times 5 is 20. So 4, 20, 20, 24 times 5 is 120. So 24 works. And the, you can find the remaining ones pretty easily. You can just divide 120 by these numbers. 120 by 4 is 30. And then you have... Uh, 120 by 3, which is 40, and then you have 60, then you have 120. So the divisors are all laid out. Now we want to talk about divisor differences. So just by scanning, I see it fails. Just by scanning, I see it fails. So what, where, where does it fail? See, 15 to 20, this divisor difference is 5, but 20 to 24, this divisor difference is 4. We want the divisor differences to increase continually, but here is where it fades from 5 to 4, from 5 to 4. So I found a counter example. I found an end for where it doesn't work. Now I'm thinking why this is happening? Why this is happening? Why is it fading? So what I do is I look at the pair of these devices pair of these devices pair of these devices what is a pair of the device of 15 well it's 120 by 15 
120 by 15, which is 8. What is the pair of the divisor 20? It is 120 by 20, which is 6. And this is 120 by 24, which is 5. So 5 to 6 to 8. These are the pairs of those divisors. So now I have a hunch. I have a hunch. What is the hunch? The hunch is this. When this increases from 1 to 2, See, the gap between 5 and 6 is 1, and the gap between 6 and 8 is 2. So when the divisors are taking a leap from 1 to 2 or 2 or more, maybe at that time, the pairings, the pairs will fail. Maybe, maybe. This is what I'm thinking. I don't know. So now that I, now I have a hypothesis. I have a hypothesis. What is the hypothesis? Let me write it down. This is something that you do while solving problems like this. You guess why something is happening and then you think, how can we write it down in symbols of mathematics? So the hypothesis is this. Maybe the divisor gaps, the divisor gaps are one, 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 and then at some point, it becomes from 1, it becomes 2 or more. So just to show you what I'm saying, this divisor gap is 1, 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 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, this divisor gap is 1 and boom, from 1, the divisor gap becomes 2. So the divisor gap takes a jump, takes a jump, right? So this is the first thing, that divisor gaps take a jump. One, 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 two or more, two or more. We don't know. So the question is, will divisor gaps always take a jump? This is a question. Will divisor gaps always take a jump? This is the question. Will it happen? Okay, that's the first question. The second question, this is the hypothesis. Hypothesis 2. If that happens, if that happens, so if you have 1, 1 and then something else, if that happens, then they are corresponding, then their corresponding paired divisors will have that failure on divisor gap being increasing. That's, a, that's the second hypothesis. So, suppose this divisor is D, then D plus 1, and then, so this is 1, this gap is 1, and then we have a jump. So, it is D plus 3 plus something maybe. Maybe the divisor jump is not 2. Maybe it is more than 2. So, this is this. Okay, 2 or more. So this gap is 2 or more, d plus 1 and d plus 3 plus k. This gap is 2 or more. So is it true that the corresponding pairs, what are the corresponding pairs? Well, it's n factorial or whatever it is, n. Let's call it n factorial. Let's call n factorial. Let's call n factorial t. So it is t by d, t by d plus 1 t by d plus 3 plus k. These are the corresponding pairs. So what do we want? You know that these are in the decreasing order. Increasing order. If I write them in the increasing order, t by d plus 1, t by d, I want, what do I want? I want this gap, I want this gap to be smaller than this gap. But I want this to fail. So this is t by d minus t by d plus 1. And this gap is t by d plus 1 minus t by d plus 3 plus k. So I now have the equation set up. And I want this particular thing, this gap, 
to be smaller than this gap only way only that way this will fail we are almost done we are almost done so i i can just cancel i i i I'll, i get a sort of a proof from here cancel of the t of course then we have d plus 1 minus d by d into d plus 1 this is less than equal to d plus 3 plus k minus d minus 1 divided by d plus 1 into d plus 3 plus k okay so we cancel this off we cancel this off we can we can also cancel the d plus 1 off that's fine everything is positive no problem so we have d plus 3 plus k is less than or equal to d into 3 plus k 2 plus k d into 2 plus k so is this true why don't you answer that is this always true this particular inequality if it is always true then we have found it so in the comment section let us know if this inequality is true and also let me know how can we prove the hypothesis 1 this is the first step that the divisor gap takes a jump okay all right so what we just found is that the way we think about a problem is first we understand the statement then we create an example draw a diagram <laughs> draw a diagram create an example for that problem statement and then you start recognizing the patterns once you recognize the patterns then you write it in symbols and then you try to show whatever you have written is correct okay this is sort of the way i think about this problem i think this is this strategy is useful for many many such problems okay all right i think this is good we'll stop out here today keep on doing beautiful mathematics i will see you in the next one